Why Hollywood movies are so bad. The lost generation of creatives. A lot of people are complaining, some outright losing their minds, over the state of modern Hollywood and the corporatized sewage being spewed upon the cinema going audience. <laughs> With the technological advancements in filmmaking today, how can they get it so badly wrong time and time again? Why are massive studios like Disney failing on such a consistent basis? There are multiple factors, including a sledgehammer crowbar and of political agendas that audiences always notice and have become increasingly tired of. Sledgehammer crowbarring. See what I did there? That's not one, but two handheld tools. The corporatization of the film and music industries is a discussion in itself, as is the near total removal of a human touch in anything. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. But more fundamentally, it's just down to poor writing. And uncreative executives, too clueless to recognize a pitifully poor script from a good one, evidently. <laughs> Today they can waste a hundred million dollars plus making a dreadfully contentious movie like Batgirl, bringing all the wrong people for it, and not realize until it's as good as completed. Art as a whole is suffering, I might add, especially music. Are Beyonce, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles really the best the industry can produce in the modern age? Really though? How many truly memorable songs have they recorded? How many will still be played in 50 years time? The music industry doesn't like Mavericks. They like people like Harry Styles. Yeah. And they say, wear this dress and shut it. <laughs> wear this, sing that and go on. I want to focus on the poor writing aspect and discuss a key but little mentioned reason as to why art has become so void of genuine creativity and ingenuity in recent years. And that is the global financial crash of 2008. Among its many disastrous consequences, I believe there was a whole generation of creative minds lost from that period and I'll go into that a little later. What's never mentioned about the GFC is that it wasn't an event isolated in just 2008. It reverberated for many years and its effects are still present today. We've never seen a boom period since, for example, and people's standard of living has continually worsened. The UK suffered years of austerity and huge cuts to public services that had never been restored, a direct result and continuation of the GFC. The economic crisis in Greece started in 2009 and continued for many years afterwards. Italy suffered similar problems in the early 2010s that they've never recovered from. And in Spain, where I live, it really hit the country, and me personally, on many different levels, in 2011. So much so, I even wrote a book about it. This leads me to my point about writing and the lost generation of creatives. During the 2000s, an aspiring screenwriter like me was able to freely submit ideas to the vast majority of production companies. You were even able to get names and numbers of producers making content similar to your idea and call them up. I once called a well-known UK TV producer and pitched a sitcom idea to him over the phone. He told me, you write it, I'll read it. So I went away and wrote the hell out of it and sent it to him. He didn't like it. However, I knew the idea was good and continued to send it out, eventually picking up interest from a production company in Scotland that had a lot of success with sitcoms like Still Game and Ralph C. Nesbitt. During much of 2010, I eagerly watched my script progress through various different stages of consideration. In mid-2011, the company had chosen my script along with one other and were meeting to discuss which they produced the following year. But they soon called me to announce that they were not going to make any new productions for the foreseeable future due to the economic situation of the time. Fuck. Along with the disappointment of losing out on a huge opportunity, it was coupled with something far more pertinent to the state of writing today. All companies, and I mean pretty much all, close the door on unsolicited submissions from aspiring writers from that time on. And then it became a closed shop between agents and studios. Today, with the explosion in TV content and streaming platforms, it's an enormous shop over there in LA now, but a very much closed one. Most laymen would say, go get an agent then. But as many writers will tell you, that's just as hard as it was trying to get a show made directly back in the day. The internet and working from home trend does nothing for writers in this regard. You still need to be out there hustling and networking. Only for an agent now rather than a producer seeking raw talent. The competition is enormous and it now includes a whole host of people who would never have considered themselves creative writers in generations before. I used to write TV comedy for a UK audience. I now write film scripts for a US audience. That's tough from Spain. 
I had a chance in the old days of sending scripts into companies directly, but UK US agents are far less likely to take me on being based on the little island of Tenerife. And I imagine a lot of genuinely creative people of the 2010s have similar stories, hence the lost generation comment. Before the social media age, truly creative people had to be discovered. They're not often extrovert or stunningly beautiful types. They're often outsiders who spend a lot of their time alone in dark rooms, ironically hoping to be discovered. And if they were good enough, they would have been in previous generations. But now you've got to have a million online followers before they even look at you. Or, as is increasingly the case, simply be a young left-wing activist. And when you look at many of these writing teams in the big corporations, cramming political ideologies into everything they're doing, it's plain to see. They're so ideologically driven, and not creatively driven, that they deconstruct popular franchises, sow neo-Marxist concepts into them, completely alienate the existing fan base, and then call them all bigots when they don't go to see the films. Rather than learning from their repeated mistakes, they double down and bring in more young activist writers to destroy the next much-loved franchise, time and time again. Meanwhile, the truly creative minds are still pouring out their ideas at home, shyly sharing them with a small number of impressed people, still waiting and hoping to be discovered. Because great creative souls always were. Aside from several tragic cases of it happened posthumously, the phenomenal music books and films of the last 500 years prove it happened more often than not. Stories abound of poor kids with talent being plucked out of obscurity and invested in. Not now, not for some time. So my suggestion to studios is, kick out the young activists and get out there and find the true talent. Artistic people with a strong voice and unique vision. You've stopped doing it for the last 15 or so years and it very much shows.